least, is Raya Gerard, an Iraqi American who many of you know. It'd be wonderful to hear from him. Raya. Thank you everyone for coming. Uh, thanks for uh, Veterans for Peace for inviting me. And I apologize to the audience because I'm the reason why lunch would be served later, I guess. <laughs> I'll try to make this short and... Uh, uh, the, since the U.S. Uh, involvement in Iraq, since the U.S. military hostilities uh, started, uh, with Iraq 19 years ago. Uh, there have been a lot of d different stages to the U.S. intervention in Iraq. In 1990 and 1991, uh, we witnessed the first U.S. invasion uh, and U.S. bombing of Iraq that destroyed the infrastructure of the country. That was followed by 13 years of military sanctions, and uh, almost daily bombings in many areas in Iraq. And of course, as all of us know, it was followed by the invasion of 2003 and the ongoing occupation for the last six years. Now, the U.S. policy in Iraq did not shift a lot during those years. The U.S. foreign policy, whether it was under the first Bush or Clinton or the second Bush, it was more or less the same foreign policy based on um, continuing the U.S. military and economic and other types of intervention uh, in Iraq and finding excuses to uh, justify that. Now, excuses of course varied. Uh, most of the excuses that were given uh, were more uh, catering to the right-wing audience by bringing up issues about U.S. security. We have to be in Iraq to kill the bad guys. We have to fight them over there, otherwise they will come attack us over our soil. This type of rhetoric. But on the other hand, there was rhetoric um, targeting the more leftist audience in the U.S., or in many cases the anti-war communities, which is the humanitarian intervention rhetoric. This is unfortunately a very extremely dangerous rhetoric that I personally find many people who work against war vulnerable to buying and falling in that slippery slope. The rhetoric that says we have to continue interfering in Iraq or other countries around the world not because we are imperialists who want to kill them or steal their uh, natural resources or protect ourselves. No, because we love them. Yeah. <laughs> because we are so good. We actually want to be there to protect them from their own people, from their own neighbors, to help them uh, uh, stop the genocide that might happen if we left or whatever other, other reasons. Now, unfortunately, this rhetoric has been rising in Iraq lately. Under the Obama administration, we haven't been hearing a lot of calls uh, to stay in Iraq to kill the bad guys, but I personally have been hearing a lot of calls to prolong the US occupation a little bit, to protect Iraqis from themselves. <laughs> and, 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 and that's why I think this is extremely important to deal with. And it's more important to deal with by organizations like Veterans for Peace or Iraq Veterans Against the War. Because usually, or my own organization, the American Friends Service Committee, because our organizations are the ones who has a more tendency to fall in this trap of humanitarian intervention. Now, the agreement that was signed last year between the Bush administration and the Iraqi government was actually forced on the Bush administration. You know, the Bush, Bush administration had a complete different agreement on mind when they started negotiating uh, last year. But the Iraqi parliament uh, did set uh, a number of bottom lines that they said we have to include these in any agreement with the US. And these bottom lines included uh, 
deadline for all troop withdrawal, not partial troop withdrawal, a deadline where the last US soldier on contractor leaves Iraq. This is number one. And number two, a deadline where all US military bases completely are shut down and handed over to the Iraqi side. In addition to other things that would uh, secure ending the US intervention, whether it was political or economical or military. Now, these deadlines were included in the agreement that was signed last year, the security agreement, or usually referred to as the SOFA or the Stats of Forces Agreement. That agreement was forced on the Bush administration against their will. I think it was one of the victories of the current Iraqi parliament that they managed to push these deadlines for all troop withdrawal into the agreement. Now, where we stand now, this actually is the first substantial change in the U.S. foreign policy uh, towards Iraq in the last 19 years. This is the first time ever the U.S. actually promises to end its intervention in Iraq completely. It's the first time ever. There were no promises in the past that the U.S. government will withdraw completely from Iraq and stop interfering completely. Now, of course, there is a lot of uh, work to be done to make sure that this agreement will happen for real and the last US soldier will leave Iraq before the end of 2011. Because where we stand now, the agreement has no guarantees. The only guarantees that we have uh, are the words of Obama and the agreement that was signed and ratified by the Iraqi parliament. Now, this agreement has not been sent to the US Congress yet. It was not ratified by the US Senate. Uh, there is very minimum congressional oversight uh, so far to ensure that the deadlines included in the agreement will be um, implemented. Now, the deadline, the deadline, and this is the most important point that I think m m must be focused on, is that what the majority of Iraqis want is that they want all the U.S. troops to leave their country and they want all of the U.S. bases to be shut down they don't want any kind of intervention in their domestic issues. Completely. Now, this is happening in Iraq because both Iraqis are Iraqis and they've been living the consequences of the US intervention and other interventions for the last decades. And because Iraqis are humans, as David just rightly uh, pointed. Iraqis are humans. Humans do not like to be occupied by foreign nations. Now, I think from now until the end of 2011, the three most important issues that Iraqis uh, have been tracking are, uh, number one, what happened in June, which is the U.S. withdrawal from cities and towns and villages. Uh, Iraqis are tracking whether this U.S. withdrawal is real, whether the U.S. will indeed stop interfering in Iraq cities and sending tanks. This is the, the major indicator that I think the Iraqi public are looking at. And number two is whether um, the Iraq, the, some parts of the agreement are, are implemented, like releasing all prisoners or um, helping Iraq get to its international standing that it used to have before 1990 or other parts of the agreement. And number three, which is the most important part, is the implementation of the full troop withdrawal, complete U U.S. withdrawal that leaves no permanent bases, no troops, and no mercenaries, and no contractors behind. Without these things happening before the end of 2011, the war and violence will go on. It will continue. So I think it's very important to see that in Iraq, we are actually uh, on a different path now. We are on a path that seems like it might be the right path for ending the occupation. The path of bringing the last U.S. soldier out of Iraq and ending the U.S. intervention in Iraq completely. But this, but this plan needs a lot of work to make it uh, become reality. And of course, before I finish, I want to note that what happened in Iraq, or what's happening now in Iraq, is, is finally going on the right path after 19 years of conflict, after one million Iraqis were killed and 